Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of ESCO Q&A. Hey, wait a minute, where's my guest? Let me go and pick him up. Okay, please have a seat. Hi everyone, I'm back again after teleporting our guests in. So, welcome to another episode of ESCO Q&A. And where well, you ask and we answer. So today I have Chris, our general manager, uh, with us. So Chris, maybe you want to introduce yourself to the audience. Uh, thanks, Jim, for having me. Hi, my name is Chris. I'm the GM of ESCO Group. Nice to meet everyone. Okay, so today's topic will be about smart offices. So hang in there and we will basically be starting our three questions. Okay, let's start with question one. So Chris, question one is basically what are the available options for me out there? That's a good question, Japer. I think first of all, when we look at the current office environment, there is a demand for being able to work remotely, right? So by extension, this means that the spaces in the organization have to seamlessly connect with the remote audiences which are not in the office. So when we look at a variety of spaces or rooms within the office, they need to do actually multiple things. You know? Not like the old days where you know a, a room was meant for a specific purpose. These days they have been multifaceted. So they, they need to be able to do local presentations, they need to be able to do um, collaboration with remote audiences as well as video conferencing. So pretty standard uh, stuff, right? But pretty important as well. I see. So it's mostly spaces that you are talking about and things like that. So I believe uh, you do have like other options available as well. You know, nowadays you have all these hot desking uh, booking apps as well as uh, room booking apps. You know, and to add another layer on top, you know, you can have sensors to indicate the occupancy of these spaces as well, right? So it really allows you in a way to optimize, you know, the kind of real estate space that you have. Uh, which is what a lot of companies are now aiming for and it's part of their strategy uh, even before you know they secure uh, real estate right so all of these things must be considered but they need to know what kind of technology is available to them i see yes. so that's really very good insights yep. okay let's head on to the next question so chris uh i mean you know everyone is like okay this is a very nice technology and everything but definitely everyone would think of the cost like what do you think would this be very costly i think uh, a lot of uh, businesses think that you know equipping a smart office might be prohibitive you know in terms of uh, the kind of money that you need to invest but actually if we take it uh, with context um you know the, the the video app points that we need today and are so critical to the running of you know most businesses you know years ago they used to cost what cost you fifty thousand dollars would cost you a fraction uh, of what uh, it used to cost today, oh. right? So, I think technology has progressed, and you know the cost has come down sufficiently enough for people to start looking at it. But having a more agile organization, you know, where people are able to work remotely and more importantly, efficiently, yeah. means that you're able to save costs, yes. you know, uh, on your workforce as well. Yeah. If you look at the, the businesses, I think most of the cost of the overheads are actually salaries, right? So I think the aim is not to say, you know, how much we should invest in technologies like this, but what is the outcome of investing in these technologies? And if the outcome leads to, you know, a more efficient organization in a more optimized real estate space, you know, with you know, uh, better efficiency and less cost, I think that's a very good outcome for everyone. And I think people should look at it this way. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's a very good uh, thought process, to be honest. I think a lot of people, what they see is like, you know, money going out and things like that. And they're like, oh, I must sweep my money out, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think, you know, some, some, some organizations don't approach it in the correct way. Yeah. So, they think you know the smart workplace strategy is simply you know slapping a couple of video endpoints into existing rooms and and you know the, the training and adoption in a lot of cases is also lacking right yeah. so what you end up with is essentially a white elephant yes right that's really the opposite of what you want because you're spending money and yeah. you're not actually gaining anything from it yeah yeah for sure yeah. so that was another very good insight thank you chris 
Okay, now we are on to our third question. So, Chris, uh, I mean, you know, we talk a, a lot about the uh, course, what smart offices are, you know, what are the different requirements and things like that. So, I believe the next step is, of course, you know, to talk about what do you envision the smart office to be in the future pers- on a personal level. Okay, great. I think I can make some uh, predictions on this. So, we start with what we currently have, right? So, we, we have a video enabled agile environment. Uh, we have space optimization technologies, but what I see in the future is a far, far deeper integration, you know, into the building assets as well, right? So, uh, you know, additional functions like such as a uh, uh, locker booking, access control, to concierge, you know, building, uh, building access um, and, and entrances, you know, all of these things, right, could possibly be, you know, found on one single platform. It's just one platform and you're able to do multiple things, right? So that you don't have to toggle between, you know, different interfaces to get different things done, right? And I think that's where everyone um, is going or should I say aspires to. I think companies that can provide really that full, robust um, interface with all these integrations are quite few and far between in the industry, I think. And, and I think the first people to get there, I think they're going to make a lot of money. I think our, our role as, you know, system integrators and, you know, purveyors of smart workspace yeah. is to understand very quickly, you know, who these people are, what can be done, and more, most importantly, how to communicate, you know, all these things to the general market because it's very broad, right? So if you start too broadly, um, you can't hold the interest of people, yeah. right? So okay. we always try to say, look, you know, possibly, if we are able to get, you know, this done, it's going to save you, you know, tons of money, tons of headache, yeah. you know, and you don't have like a world class facilities for for your staff, which is what you want. For sure. Right? Yeah. For yeah. sure. For sure. Yeah. I mean, definitely, I would want to work in a place where I always feel like I'm looking at technology at its forefront and things like that. Okay, so we reached the end of all the questions that we had. So, Chris, do you have any final parting words? Yeah, I do. Uh, I think as uh, you know, leaders of your respective organizations, we should you know, try to think you know, like our employees, right? And try to imagine you know, what an employee would want on a normal day-to-day working journey. And whether the organization has the correct uh, technology, uh, the correct equipment, the correct training to be able to facilitate you know, the employees to work efficiently and happily, right? Because ultimately, this work from home, uh, hybrid workspace, smart office team, it's not going away. I mean, we look at it as a pretty big culture shift, which is reflected um, in you know the requirements of many of the people looking for employment, yeah. you know, like companies today, right? So if, if you don't have that, or if you're unable to provide this, then I think, you know, organizations would really miss out yeah. Okay. So that was really a very precise, um, you know, ending to everything. So if you need such services, you know, you need some consultation and things like that, just feel free to reach out to us. You can reach out to us here, or otherwise you can reach out to us directly on LinkedIn as well. Okay. Thanks everyone. Please remember to like and share.